Hi, I'm Pedro de Costa, Editorial Fellow here at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. I'm joined today by David Stockton. He's a Senior Fellow here at the Institute and former Chief Economist at the Fed. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, so we have this massive Fed meeting coming up. Uh, this is a pretty big decision for someone like myself who's been covering the Fed for a long time. It's going to be likely the first rate hike since June 2006. And of course, rates have been at zero since December 2008. Talk a little bit about the significance of the move and how do you expect the Fed to communicate its decision? So it's certainly been a while, hasn't it? Uh, and I think finally circumstances have uh, coalesced around uh, conditions that make it, I think, quite easy for the Fed to envision and actually carry out its first rate hike. Uh, I think um, they'll move 25 basis points, as every, everybody is currently anticipating. If they don't, that will be quite a, a shock to all of us, mm -hmm. uh, including a shock to the credibility of the Fed. But I think uh, that seems like a very low probability event at this point. Um, they will communicate that they're raising 25 basis points, but I think the state will indicate uh, that they still think that it's going to be a fairly slow uh, and gradual increase in rates going forward. I think it will be more interesting to the, the statement itself is likely to be uh, you know, relatively uninformative. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it will be more interesting to see how Yellen communicates the outlook for policy in the press conference. And there, I do think she will continue to adhere and stick pretty close to a message of go slow, data dependence, both those things together. And we'll be getting a new set of forecasts as well, right? And I, I presume those forecasts will also play into that message. They will, indeed. You know, I'm anticipating uh, maybe a small upgrade to their economic forecast, mm -hmm. uh, given that September was sort of in the midst of the greatest concern about, uh, about the global economy and about its ramifications for the U.S., uh, but very small, modest. And I'm expecting really no change to the median dots forecast here. Some people have talked about the, perhaps some members of the FOMC wishing to, w w revising down their dots in order to reinforce this message of gradualness. Mm -hmm. I actually think that would be a dangerous path to go down, and I don't think they'll mess around with the dots to try to manipulate market expectations. They're going to try to give their, their best shot. And I don't think they'll go the opposite direction either. I don't think things have improved so much since September that they're likely to want to, uh, most FOMC members, uh, revise up expectations sure. for, for the path of policy. Now, I've heard some officials use some language uh, to the effect of, uh, we're going to go this time, but the, for the future moves are going to be tied directly to the path of inflation. You think there, that she's going to really emphasize that? Because it seems that that's the biggest hindrance to raising rates is, of course, that the inflation rate hasn't really been cooperating and has been below target for over three years now. In fact, I think that is one of the principal reasons why they are going to go slow. I think one of the things the Fed's going to want to avoid is giving the markets uh, any cause to think, so is it going to be every other meeting, every third meeting? How is some sort of simple metric? Uh -huh. uh, and to avoid doing that, two things are going to have to happen. They're going to really going to have to be data dependent. And in fact, if uh, the inflation data uh, continue to disappoint on the low side, uh, they're going to have to skip a few meetings until they actually see that. Uh, evidence that we're seeing more of a pickup in inflation. Likewise, if for some reason we in fact get a, a firmer uh, readings on inflation than we're currently anticipating, they might need to be prepared to move uh, more aggressively. I think my own forecast is that uh, the inflation rate is going to remain quite low. I think they could easily skip till April or June for the second increase, and okay. I'm only expecting another uh, three increases over the course of, of 2016 at this point. Is there any precedent in Fed history for, for a, a tightening cycle that begins that slowly and that is that kind of cautious? So I think that would be quite unusual because normally Fed policy is tightening to try to restrain an economy that's actually showing much more momentum and more, much more evidence of inflation pressures, whereas this is going to be, this is more of a a grudging tightening cycle yeah. than a, a real restraining tightening cycle, where I think the Fed sees itself sort of approaching the limits, the upper limits perhaps, of full employment and needing to sort of get off the floor, but without any great enthusiasm for getting rates normalized quickly. And I don't think the data, in fact, are going to require them to do so. And one last question about likely market reaction, both to the immediate decision next week and then following that, because 
do you, I wonder if there's a risk that the data dependence aspect of it could, could lead to greater market volatility in the sense that, you know, with every better than expected jobs number, the market might think, oh, maybe they are going to start hiking every meeting or, or the other way around. Is there, is there that risk? And how much of the, the immediate tightening is priced in already? So I think uh, right now the immediate tightening is priced in. And in fact, um, famous last words, but I'm not expecting a, an especially adverse or sizable reaction or maybe even a positive reaction to Fed tightening next week of any significant proportion. I do think you've you put your finger on uh, what is likely to be happening going forward, which is I do think there's going to be more volatility. So far, the markets have really been so focused on the timing of the first rate increase. Now, all of a sudden, the whole path is going to be much more in play. And I do think uh, until the Fed can convey a better sense of how they're going to react to those incoming data, as you mentioned, maybe a better employment report, um, there's going to be more volatility, more swing more sensitivity to the data and more sensitivity to Fed communications as well. That could be greater, maybe even greater than uh, warranted sensitivity of those communications. So I think we're looking at a period in 2016 of, of more volatility in financial markets, even though I think when we get through that whole period and look back on it, what we'll see is a gradual tightening of financial conditions uh, and that that uh, you know, will be having some effect on certain elements of the economy. Thank you so much, Dave, and uh, it'll certainly be an interesting meeting. It shall be.